Hi, I'm Benton Stokes. And I'm Elaine O'Rourke. And this is Cocktail Theology. So we put out a cocktail book. It's been a couple of years ago now. Yeah. And in it, there was a recipe for a cocktail called That Night in Trinidad. This is a sequel to That Night in Trinidad. Oh. This is called That November in Barbados. <laughs> <laughs> Which simply says to me that we have not been to Trinidad or Barbados together. No, we have not. So clearly, we've got some traveling to do. We do. But this cocktail is super yummy. It is uh, vodka, which we rarely use in cocktails. But Ooh, vodka is such a chameleon that it sometimes for drinks like this, it's good because it just kind of gets out of the way. Yeah. All spice dram, which yes. we love. Caribbean in nature, spices, use it sparingly, but mm-hmm. it's really great in tiki drinks. It's really great in fall drinks, holiday drinks. Yep. And then this has coconut milk mm-hmm. and it has lime juice and a little bit of maple syrup for sweetener. Yeah, this is one of those dangerous drinks. <laughs> it's it's where, really tasty. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's a problem with vodka, but I don't drink for lack of flavor. I, I want the flavor. Right. Right? So you get something like this, and it's like, you could just drink gallons of it before <laughs> you, you, you die. <laughs> but yes, but it's really tasty. It's really, really good. Yeah, I like it. If, listeners, you would like a copy of our ebook, The Cocktail Theology Cocktail Book, let me know. Uh, you can reach out at cocktailtheology.com. Yep. All you got to do is, you know, support us. Yeah. Follow us. Subscribe. Right. right. You know. Send us ideas. Send us ideas. Cocktail ideas. Or... Really any ideas. Any ideas. Well, listener Jeanette sent us an idea. Yes, she did. And so we're talking about that today. The question that she posed... She kind of went into her history with the church and sort of a lack of, of humor. good jokes. <laughs> yeah, a lack of good jokes, but a lack of humor overall, yeah. And so her question really is, what is humor's role in Christianity? And so really, the conversation I think that we want to have is about humor in the Bible. Yes. What in the Bible is funny? And, there, and actually, there's a lot of funny stuff in the Bible. Yeah. We'll get into sort of why people miss it, <laughs> but but there there are some really funny things in the Bible. Yeah, yeah. In fact, when I read this, I had a little trouble imagining not reading humor in it, right? Because at this point in my life, it's so obvious to me yeah. that I had to kind of like back up and go, okay, so why why wouldn't you read? And I think you know, especially if the the ideas you got about the Bible you got when you were growing up. Yeah. Then all you need is one deadly serious pastor or someone who takes it as the word of God in a really crazy way mm-hmm. <laughs> to think that there's no humor, right? right. I, I've been told by teachers, and I don't read Hebrew well enough at all to to comment on this, but there are a lot of puns in Hebrew, mm. lots of lo- lots of wordplay in Hebrew that... I, I wouldn't catch and doesn't translate because humor doesn't translate. Right. So, so what do you think about humor in the Bible? Well, I, I think there's a lot of humor in the Bible. Like Jeanette, I think I, I grew up in sort of a humorless kind of mm. church environment where everything was taken so literally in the Bible that it was just like, well, you know, if the whale vomited <laughs> Jonah... <laughs> Onto the shore, then that's what happened. That's right. You know? And it must be holy. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, but it's funny. It is funny. That a whale vomited. <laughs> because, I, you know, it's like, it's like the way, at least the way I grew up with the Jonah story, and the Jonah story is just funny all the way through. It is. But the way I grew up with the Jonah story is the, they talked about whale, right? And of course, it's supposed to be sea monster fish. But but I always had this image of a really big whale yes. pulling up on shore, which <laughs> I don't know, I didn't find funny as a kid, <laughs> go figure, <laughs> opening up its mouth and Jonah kind of strolling <laughs> out. But that's not what the Bible says at all. Uh-uh. So perhaps you could share exactly what the Bible says. Do you have well, that? Well, well, Jonah is really... <laughs> He's such a whiner. He, he is such a whiner. <laughs> 
<laughs> my, my favorite, though, assuming you guys know the story of Jonah, but, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave out very important details, I have no doubt. God told Jonah to go to Nineveh, that Nineveh needed a prophet. Yep. And Jonah's like, no. <laughs> oh, hell no. It's <laughs> oh, hell no. What he says. And so then the whale swallows him whole. Right. Jonah's hanging out in this belly of this whale, which would be nasty and disgusting. <laughs> and then... <laughs> Jonah's like, you know, free me from the whale. I'll do whatever you say. That's and right. then the whale pukes up Jonah on the on the shore. And so nasty Jonah goes to Nineveh. <laughs> and I think the people are probably scared of him because he smells so right? bad. And they're just like, we'll do whatever you say. Just get away. <laughs> just step back. You slimy, nasty step. thing. And so Nineveh, you know, they they all bow to God. So when Jonah finally goes, he does what God tells him. Yeah. God gets the result God wants. Yeah. And Jonah, was he happy about this? No. No, he was not happy. And so <laughs> in chapter four of Jonah, which is, this is just part, this is the part that this cracks me up every time. Jonah gets angry because none of the all turn their hearts to God. Right. And they're not going to get destroyed. And they're not going to get destroyed now. <laughs> and Jonah goes like, oh, Lord, is this not what I said while I was still in my own country? This is why I fled to Tarshish in the beginning. <laughs> For I know you are a gracious and merciful God, slow to anger. Darn it. (laughs) Dang it. Right? Abounding in steadfast love, relenting from punishment. And now, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. It's just like, oh my God, what a drama queen. (laughs) Is it right for you to be angry, God says? And Jonah goes out of the city, you know, in a huff, and sits down on the east of the city and made a booth for himself there. Right. Right. And he sat under it in the shade, waiting to see what would become of the city. And so God appointed a bush. <laughs> appointed a bush. And that's the language. I mean, that's it the isn't language like I'm reading God this right caused out. A, yeah. a tree to grow up. Caused, he, no, mm-hmm. Appointed a bush. Yeah, to give shade over his head to save him from his discomfort. And so Jonah was Being very, merciful. very happy about the bush. <laughs> So he wasn't happy that God showed mercy to Nineveh, but he was very, That's right. very happy that he showed right, mercy Right, because, mercy because to him. if you're going to go up on a hill to pout mm-hmm. and to wait for the destruction of people <laughs> and the sun's beating on your head, well, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> that's just not right at all. So then when, the, when dawn came up the next day, when the sun came up the next day, God appointed a worm <laughs> and the worm attacked the bush. <laughs> This is the best story ever. <laughs> so that it withered. And then when the sun rose, God prepared a sultry east wind. And the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint and asked that he might die. <laughs> now, all he has to do is leave the hill. He's sitting there waiting for for the destruction of the city, hoping that God will relent and go ahead and destroy the city. <laughs> right? And he's uncomfortable. And so he's pissed off. He's pissed. Oh, my God. And then God says to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the bush? <laughs> Is it? (laughs) And he says, yes, angry enough to die. (laughs) It's just the best. And it's just like, have we been Jonah? Yeah, of course. Jonah's like your your average five year old. Yeah, basically. But but it's just the best. It's just the best. And but then, you know, God finishes okay, so you're gonna be angry about the bush and you're gonna be angry about the worm who ate the bush. But you aren't concerned about Nineveh. Right, right. And and why shouldn't I be concerned about Nineveh? Right, and that's when it all gets serious. Right, but it's just, <laughs> it's just The whole hilarious. sequence is so funny. Yeah, I actually did a little research on this because I wanted to make sure I could have some examples besides Jonah. Because uh-huh. Jonah, to me, Jonah's a laugh <laughs> riot from beginning to end. <laughs> uh, but I, as I was doing this, I was thinking that one of the reasons we miss the humor in the Bible is we've been taught to take it so deadly seriously. Right, right. As if human beings weren't writing about their experience with God and each other. Yeah. So throughout the Old Testament, obviously, and the New Testament, and even in some of the words of Jesus, we find a lot of poking fun at what it means to be human. Mm-hmm. And then we have other things that are just written in a funny way. Yeah. So I, I wanted to pull up a few of these just because I thought it would be kind of fun to... Mm-hmm. I'm going to read you basically <laughs> Bible jokes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So in First Samuel, the Israelites have wound up in Philistine territory, okay? Mm-hmm. And there have been a couple of plagues because the Philistines, right? Mm-hmm. Their priests and diviners say, 
hey, if you return the Ark of the Covenant, because they've stolen it, mm -hmm. if you return the Ark of the Covenant to the Israelites, you should be fine. And they're like, okay. And then they say, but you should probably send a guilt offering with you. Okay. <laughs> which is which is basically payment for your feelings uh -huh. of guilt, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. And then the Philistines say, well, what guilt offering should we send? <laughs> and the priests and the diviners say, five gold tumors, and they mean tumors, <laughs> And five gold rats, according to the number of Philistine rulers, because the same plague has struck both you and your rulers, make models of the tumors and of the rats that are destroying your country and give glory to Israel's God. And, and I, I mean, you just have to imagine this for a minute, okay? There have been these, these plagues of tumors and rats. <laughs> and so the priests say, here's an idea. <laughs> Make gold replicas of tumors and rats to send to them along with the Ark of the Covenant, uh -huh. because then that will make them happy. And I'm trying to imagine <laughs> the priests on the other side, the Israelite priests, getting back the Ark of the Covenant and a boatload of tumors and a boatload of rats yeah. all made out of gold, right? It's just, it, the image of it is really funny. It's supposed to be funny. It's supposed to be funny. But there's another gold reference that I think is wonderful. So you may remember that in Exodus... Moses is up the mountain talking to God, getting the commandments, all that. Mm -hmm. The people start rebelling. They're, they're whining again because mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. all they do. Mm -hmm. And what happens is they start asking for a different God to worship because they don't think Moses is coming back, whatever. And so Aaron says, give me all your cold. Right. And it's very clear Aaron and whoever helps him mm -hmm. constructs a calf out mm -hmm. of all of their gold. Mm -hmm. But here's the part that's fun. So not too long afterwards, after Moses come down and gotten all really angry, Moses said to Aaron, what did these people do to you that you have brought so great a sin upon them? And Aaron said, and you, you, I, it makes me think, wonder if Aaron's like the younger brother. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> do not let the anger of my Lord burn hot. You know the people that they are wicked. <laughs> they said to me, make gods for us. Who shall go before us? As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Aaron says, so I said to them, whoever has gold, take it off. So they gave it to me and I threw it into the fire and out came this cow. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just imagining Moses looking at him going, really? Like, just, I, I, like, are you going to stick with that one? That the golden calf just kind of wandered out of the fire? <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that's one of the ones I find really, really funny. It's Another really one, funny. Um, this one's in Genesis, and it's little. It's a little one, but again, you have to be paying attention, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, Esau and Jacob, and Jacob steals Esau's inheritance and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. So you may remember that Esau is out in the fields working or something, and he comes right. in, and he's been working all day, and Jacob's been plotting. <laughs> I don't know what <laughs> Jacob's been doing. So Esau comes in, and he says to Jacob, let me eat some of that red stuff, for I'm famished. <laughs> like, we have no idea what the red stuff is. He's clearly looking at some pot of something that's red stuff. And then, which is weird enough as it is, <laughs> that red stuff, it could have been anything. But then the Bible tells us that after that, he was called Edom, which means red. <laughs> so, like, it's kind of like if you went to New Mexico and said, I'll have some of the red chili and the green chili. And from then on, you were called red and green. <laughs> It's just, it, it's ridiculous. Yeah. So those are some of the ones that I love, but I could just keep going. There are some really good ones. Can I read one more? Uh, pl uh, yeah, please. Okay. So this one is actually out of Second Kings. And <laughs> the, I, after I read this one, I'm going to explain what I think is going on in the Bible. Okay. Okay. So this is about the prophet Elisha, who came along after Elijah. And I'm sure there's a better pronunciation of both of those. But... From there, Elisha went up to Bethel. As he was walking along the road, some boys came out of the town and jeered at him. Get out of here, Baldy, they said. And it really, I mean, that's essentially what it says. Get out of here, Baldy. He turned around, looked at them, and called down a curse on them in the name of the Lord. Now, I need to pause right here and just say, when he's calling down a curse in the name of the Lord, he's doing what we would be doing. Like, damn it. <laughs> like, he's doing that. Okay. Call down a curse on them in the name of the Lord. <laughs> then two bears came out of the woods and mauled 42 of the boys. <laughs> now, I realize that bears mauling boys is not funny, okay? But the whole picture, 
And and the thing about the the humor in the Bible, the stuff that works in translation, mm-hmm. is it's it's more like Monty Python. Yes, that's than it exactly is like right. a sitcom. Yeah, it's all about the absurdity of human beings and the mm-hmm. and the ridiculousness of us. Yeah, and and so there are all of these exaggerated phrases. It's like Jesus at one point says something like, "If your hand offends you, cut it off." Right. That's supposed to be funny. Yeah. Now we go. Well, I better go cut <laughs> <on> my hand. <laughs> and that's not what Jesus meant. No. What he's doing is he's 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 hyperbolizing yeah. for the purpose of saying, y'all are focusing on the wrong thing. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. It's not about your hand. It's about you. <laughs> <laughs> so stop blaming your hand. That's right. Stop, stop blaming, your blaming hand. the fire. Right. Aaron. <laughs> right? But I mean, that's supposed to be funny. Yeah. And I think that that's part of the problem is we have to go into reading the Bible the way we would read any other book that has normal human absurdities in it. Right. You get things like, and I I've, I've, know I've told this a million times to everybody, I have two very, very favorite moments, actually three very favorite <laughs> moments in the New Testament. Mm-hmm. Okay, so one of them is when Paul is preaching, and there's, a, I think, a 12-year-old kid sitting in the windowsill, and Paul goes on for so long that the kid falls asleep and, <laughs> Paul, and falls out the window <laughs> down to the ground, and he's dead. That's in scare quotes. And everybody is, you know, panicked. Paul rushes down, and Paul goes, oh, no, 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 he's not dead. Here. And then he goes, he takes this poor kid back upstairs and keeps preaching. I'm like, oh, my goodness, I've heard this preacher. Anyway, so that one I find funny. Um, another one that I always find funny is Jesus has come back. It's, he, you know, he's returned. He's been resurrected. He's out on the shore yelling to the guys. <laughs> and Peter... God love Peter. Like Peter all by himself is hysterically funny, right? So Peter is out fishing in the boat. Uh-huh. Okay. And just at that point, you're thinking, okay, you know, he's out there in his tunic, whatever. He's mm-hmm. fishing in the boat. He sees Jesus. He stands up. He puts on his clothes because he was naked. <laughs> and then he goes out. He jumps into the water and goes out to meet Jesus. And I'm like, okay, all the things with this picture. Like... Okay, he's fishing naked, and then to dive into the water, he puts on his cloak? What? Why? <laughs> what is happening, why? Peter? What just happened? Where? What? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, if, if I go to heaven, mm. whatever that means, and if St. Peter's at the gate, the first mm. thing I'm going to have to say is, okay, dude, seriously. <laughs> at least you got dressed that? for this. <laughs> <laughs> and then my last one that makes me laugh every single year on Pentecost is, you know, it's Pentecost the disciples are speaking in the the languages of the people, the people that hear them, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. And the people are saying, what's going on? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and Peter goes, <laughs> again, it's Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Peter goes to the window and he yells out to the people who are down on the streets, people of Jerusalem. Now, the people of Jerusalem have been speculating that all this talking in languages they, that they could understand meant the men were drunk because you know <laughs> if i ever get drunk i am able to speak french fluently. <laughs> anyway so peter yells and he says people of jerusalem these men are not drunk as you suppose for it's only nine in the morning <laughs> and i know that everybody in the streets goes uh-huh and and that's your argument <laughs> Anyway, so it's stuff like that. I mean, that's the thing. When we read the Bible and we're trying to read it, to actually read it and understand what's going on, we have to look at the the human situation of these things. Right. And, it, you know, Jeanette asked in her, her email about poop jokes. Uh-huh. There are a lot of poop jokes, which I'm not going to go into <laughs> at the moment. But that's it, right? Yeah. If you're not looking... For that kind of humor, you're not going to see it because mm-hmm. you're going to be taking it so seriously. Right. That you'd be like, okay, Moses is talking about poop. What am I supposed to <laughs> What are we supposed to gain from this? Right. <laughs> As opposed to, oh, Moses. Really? Uh, again. Really? we got to talk about the poop again? <laughs> you know what I mean? Or whatever the thing is. So yeah. that's that's it for me. What yeah. else are you thinking no, about? No, totally. totally. I, think, I think you're exactly right. I think the problem is that, that so many Christians, because they... They buy into the idea of the inerrancy of scripture or they believe that, you know, God spoke every 
blessed word, including all the articles, A's and these and the ends, <laughs> that that we should take them all so deadly serious. Right. The fact is, people wrote the Bible right. over a long period of time, many, many authors, 66 books in the Christian Bible that most of us read. If we take it so seriously, we miss not just the humor. Right. We miss the humanity. Yes. We miss the nuance. Yes. We miss the context. Yes. We miss all of it. We distill it all down to these little proverbs and little verses that you can use to promote your own point of view or to attack your enemy or whatever. And that is not what the Bible is or was ever meant to be. That's right. So much of this comes down to how do you read the Bible? That's right. Because if you read it contextually, prayerfully, uh, if you read it looking for not just like answers for your life, right? but if you look at it as, wow, what should I gain from what right. I just read? Right. Then you're going to start to see the humor in it. Yes. You're going to start to see the absurdity in some of the things that are, right. that, are, that are written about mm-hmm. and that we read about. And that's not by accident. It is not by accident. And it's not because we're only reading a translation, so of course we don't see the serious... No, it's written that way. It's written it's that like way. It's that like whole, that whole scene where God speaks to Abram and Sarah and says, you will have a child within a year. And they both go to sex. Like mentally, uh-huh. they both go like, to sex. They're like, wait a minute. They're we like, haven't done that in 68 years. <laughs> right? <laughs> the scene is supposed to be lighthearted. Right. It's not supposed to be... Abram. <laughs> I can't even do it. Anyway, so it's not supposed to be that. But I, I love that you brought up that the Bible wasn't handwritten by God. Because I love the idea that, that God sat down and said, okay, I need to tell a story about whining <laughs> and why you should follow. I'm going to tell. There's my servant Jonah. Let's see what he does. <laughs> right. right? Jonah. Oh, not you. Yes, Lord. You know what I mean? I love the idea that God actually dictated Uh this whole thing. Because then God's going, oh, there comes the fish. You know what I mean? And I realize that that would mean that God has a kind of an unfriendly sense of humor at times. But the fact is, is so do we. So do we. You know. So do we. I love that idea. I love the idea (laughs) that God told the writers of the Gospels, to write down that Peter was naked fishing. <laughs> Make sure you get that part. <laughs> Don't miss that Peter was naked. Because what's that going on? <laughs> what is that about anyway? Oh my gosh. Uh, Listeners, okay. we want to hear your your stories. <laughs> verses you find funny. Things that you um, find humor in in the Bible. Or you can also share with us, you know, wow, I never thought <laughs> the Bible could be this funny. Uh, and we would love to hear that from you. Cocktailtheology.com is where we are. We love ideas for cocktails, for episodes. Thank you, listener Jeanette, for this great episode. Yes. Anything else? Well, I just feel like our stand-up careers are about to begin. <laughs> we'll just read from the Bible. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> right. Oh, no, that was awesome. Uh, Let's go have some more of this. Thanks for listening, everybody. (laughs) Bye. Bye.